All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Haven't done an episode for a while, but we're back here. Uh, back with Jack, I guess. I don't know. I think I should actually come up with a title for this channel. But I have no idea what to call it. Back with Jack. You don't know Jack. Some other bad pun. If you guys have an idea for a, a title for my channel, go ahead and uh, give me a comment. But yeah, today we are here with the Dark Ascension pre-release online on Magic the Gathering Online. And yeah, today is actually the first day that they have these uh, overpriced queues. Uh, these queues are what? Uh, 30 tickets actually, so like $30, which is actually $5 more expensive than real life pre-release. But you know, I'm bringing you guys this exclusive first day content. And hopefully uh, we win some packs and uh, make back our uh, investment. Also, opening a Soren would also help. I wonder how much he's going for. He's probably going for a bit. Let's see. Marketplace. Soren Lord. Oops. Alright, Soren. I failed search. 31. Yeah, it's not too bad. So, I mean, selling Soren would make up for the queue. And I think we're waiting on 16 people here to start. Uh, it's going to be four rounds of Swiss, three packs of Innistrad, and three packs of Dark Ascension. So, um, just some, some, some quick thoughts on right before it starts, I guess. I actually find Dark Ascension to be easier to build because you're pretty much forced to go one way. Okay, we can see we don't have any Sorn there. It was highly unlikely anyway, but let's go do rarity. All right, so we do get a mythic, a uh, Moonveil Dragon, which is the Dark Ascension Dragon, followed up by a Kroon Outlaw, not too bad. And it looks like both our black and our blue have decent rares too. We got a Sturmgeist, Dungeon Geist, and then Fiend of the Shadows and Skurzdag High Priest. And scanning over here, I don't see many red uncommons, unfortunate, but hopefully we'll get some Brimstone Volleys. And some decent black cards here, and not a lot of blue cards. So let's go ahead and go by color now. Yeah, so it does look like our red is a bit lacking. Uh, not as lacking as our white. White can definitely be easily written off. And let's go ahead and look at our red. Um, some good playbills. There's the Brimstone Volley, Kessig Wolf. That guy's good. This is decent. So red, unfortunately, is not very deep. Uh, and Moonveil Dragon actually requires a heavy investment in red. So, I mean, unfortunate, probably not going to be able to play red. So we'll see what else, what else we have in here. Blue looked interesting. So let's go ahead and start off with three really good guys. Uh, this Flash Bird is very good. Let's go ahead and do this. So 2-3 flying with Flash, you know, whenever you leave four mana open and you're playing blue, this guy is definitely a factor. Griptide is an instant speed grass of phantoms, great for combat tricks. And this guy is just an efficient um, evading beater. He's a 2-2 flying with undying. So uh, not so good on defense though. But it looks like our blue is amazing actually. Uh, Occultus is fine. Forbidden Alchemy is pretty good in the right deck. Div Divination is the same thing. Uh, and this is always play. So we have a bunch of good blue cards and it's definitely uh, still a bunch of playable cards in here. So go, let's go ahead and switch on over to black, which I, I like a bit. Fiend is a pretty good 3-3 flying that uh, exiles cards from their hand. Uh, Burial Rites is fine. Let's see, Heroine's Journey is pretty decent too. A bit slow, but three cards is three card. Let's see. Uh, High Priest is pretty good. And if we're playing High Priest, we're doing a punch stuff definitely. So I think we're definitely going to go black-blue here. We just have to find the... The right combination. So that also means Forbidden Alchemy is coming in. And probably not going to do a self mill thing. Let's see what else we have in here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do sort by converted mana cost. Like I, I was saying earlier, um, with three packs of Dark Ascension, it's you actually don't have much choice when building sealed pools. Like the, the pools almost build themselves, especially if you get like a dual color um, Lord, which we didn't get. I mean, it basically means you're in those colors. But let's see. Uh, but let's see, I guess before we go black-blue, does green have anything great? 
Uh, just big dudes. And nope, nothing amazing. It's cool. These are all uh, decent cards, but yeah, nothing to go away from black blue. I, I think um, our power is definitely in the black blue area here. All right. Um, let's see what else. We have some chosen of Markovs, but these guys are not that great unless you're playing, I think, black red vampires, because a two-two for three mana is not very exciting. I mean, they're playable if you need stuff. That scores deck flare is pretty good. An expensive removal spell. I guess another reason to run these if you have nothing else to run. Oh, we actually have double flare. Ooh, we got black cat here. Could be interesting. Black cat with a Stitcher's Apprentice. So much value. <laughs> and let's see, for our artifacts, not much good stuff. Uh, I think Wolf Hinter Quiver is playable. He's best when you combo him with um, white, because white has a creature called Midnight Guard, which untaps every time a creature comes into play. But otherwise, you know, it's a five mana equipped card that costs a lot. I might leave this on the sideboard for now. So, yeah, I think, especially with Dungeon Geist and like these cards, we have a lot of five mana cards, but I definitely want to curve out here. So let's go ahead and Add in some just random humans right here. Get a creature count up. Yeah, I'll go ahead and play Black Cat too. Yeah, unfortunately it looks like we're really low on removal here. I mean, our remo our actually only removal is like Scores Deck Flare. Uh, Departure is kind of removal, and Dungeon Geist is also kind of removal. But I don't th we do have an Evolving Wilds. We could splash red for a Brimstone Volley. Hmm. But, you know, that's, that's the only reason we'd be we would want to be running red. We could also splash uh, white for unveil rights. You know, and especially with Black Cat, I think I'll actually run Alto's Reap here. And I guess if we're playing the delaying game, might as well add a Mana Skeleton. Uh, yeah, not sure we want to be self-milling here. We don't actually have too many cards that are good with self-mill. I guess if we play Unbarrel Rights, we can start self milling. And yeah, I guess I want this guy now too. Just a bunch of creatures on the ground. Yeah, so we're about. I guess we've gone slightly more to a control route here. Yeah, I guess we'll run Unbarrel Rights. And this lets us just splash a. Uh, one planes for evolving wilds maybe. So yeah, right, that curves a little bit awkward. We do have a lot of two and three drops, which is good, and then kind of skip on the four drops, and then we go right to the good five drops. But you know, I think these are efficient cards right here. Fiend of the Shadow, Storm Geist, Dungeon Geist, very efficient. So we should have some okay games. All right, let's go ahead and add our land now. We're doing one evolving wilds, leaving us sixteen slots. One for planes, and then we have 15 slots left, and mostly double blue here. So probably going with a 8-7 or a 9-6. Our only double black card is here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and just go away with 8-7 uh, with blue. Bam. All right. So the deck doesn't look too bad. Um, our only big thing is lack of removal, and our removal is high mana removal. So if we can get like a Scourge Deck Flare out, you know, and basically get some Scourge Deck High Priest out too, we we got we have a lot of sacrifice effects, including this uh, al one Alter's Reap. So High Priest should be good when we draw him, and then uh, we actually do have a bunch of humans on the two and three mana scale here to uh, sacrifice to Flare. So hopefully uh, they'll do well for removal. And you know, then we just have uh, good flyers to beat in the air with. So, yeah, I mean, it's not too bad of a deck. And yeah, I'll see you guys in round one. Nope, in a quick add on update, I did remove a Manor Skeleton to put in a Falcon Raft Torture for more synergy, uh, one for a sacrifice outlet, and two, you know, it's another vampire to transform the Chosen of Markov. So yeah, just wanted to update you guys, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in round one.